Hello everybody. So my name is Miguel Cousseiro and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm here to present um, a joint work together with Erko Lechtonen, Laura Mitli, Henri Prade and Gilles Richard, which is entitled When Analogical Proportions Do Not Fail, The Nominal Case. Yeah? Okay, so I guess that everybody has at least uh, an intuitive idea which is uh, an analogy and we have been dealing with, uh, with analogies. Uh, for instance, in this example we have that France is to um, Eiffel Tower, what Australia, and then this would be kind of the, the the thing to answer is what would be the item that would go in analogy uh, with this uh, with this example, uh, which in fact, well, of course, there could be several answers, um, but uh, this already illustrates that analogies they intervene in two uh, key cognitive processes. So one of them it's inference, like the one that I was trying to illustrate, but we could also see um, uh, creativity as one of these uh, key cognitive processes because we could have several answers to this uh, to this uh, question mark. Yeah. Now uh, uh, analogies and analogical uh, proportions they have been also used uh, quite extensively. Uh, and recently in machine learning. So uh, some of the, the, the interesting applications have been in NLP, for instance, for um, uh, machine translation. Also several application or analogies has been used uh, in classification and recommendation tasks. Um, also recently there has been some works concerning um, or using analogies for performing data set augmentation and in fact as analogies can be seen as a generalization of case-based reasoning, they also have been uh, used in, um, in, uh, in kind of a, the transfer learning and also as means of obtaining um, explain, uh, explanations, yeah? Okay, so just to give an outline of this talk, so essentially we are going to start by recalling some basic notions uh, dealing with uh, analogies. Um, and we are going to uh, focus on two cases, so the Boolean and the nominal uh, settings of uh, analogical uh, proportions. Then we are going to discuss uh, a motivating uh, problem that we already uh, mentioned, which is dataset augmentation, and this will uh, motivate this notion of analogy-preserving functions. Then we are going to focus on the nominal case, we are going to defi define the so-called hard uh, analogy-preserving uh, functions, and towards the end we are going to provide um, local but also global descriptions of these functions and we are going to terminate with some discussion and uh, indicating some ongoing research work yeah okay so to give you a definition of uh, analogy or kind of a formalization of uh, analogy uh, these analogies they can be seen as quaternary uh, relations that satisfy three axioms so the first axiom is reflexivity that is to say that uh, analogy should contain tuples of the form AB, AB. Uh, the other one is uh, symmetry, that is to say, if A, B, C, and D are in analogy, then C, D, A, B should also be in analogy. And the third axiom is the so called central permutation, in which, which says that if A, B, C, and D uh, are in analogy, then the, 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 the central uh, pair. B and C, if you reverse them, uh, the resulting tuple should also be in analogy. That is to say, A, C, B, D should also be in analogy. Yeah? Now, of course, if we have these three axioms satisfied, then we could derive uh, several other, um, several other um, uh, properties. Uh, so it is not too difficult to see that uh, um, A, A, B, B should also be, um, should also, this is referred to as identity, should also be an analogy in an analogical proportion uh, then of course if you have uh, if you have a b c d then if you permute the extremes then you should also have uh, that the resulting tuple is um, is an analogy also you can reverse the inside pair that is to say if a b c d are, uh, are in analogy then b a d c should also be in analogy and finally it's the complete reversal that is to say if a b c and d are in analogy then d c b a are also in analogy yeah okay now an analogical proportions uh, based on this uh, three axioms so there are several examples some of which are quite classical like for instance the numerical cases of geometric proportion and arithmetic proportion all of us have been uh, using these proportions uh, extensively throughout 
our um, our lives but you also have the the kind of the the the, 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 the restriction to the two element case so the boolean proportion and here you have uh, illustrated the different types of analogical proportions that you can find on a boolean cube yeah now what I'm trying to say with this is, of course, there are several ways of defining uh, analogies and analogical proportions. And some of these definitions, of course, they depend on the underlying uh, structure of um, and the available operators on the underlying set X. Yeah. Now, of course, if you are um, so, so several uh, examples uh, of different uh, sets X, such as uh, X could refer to arbitrary sets. It could also refer to matrices, as we have mentioned uh, with the application in NLP. It could refer to words over a given alphabet, but of course it could also be instances of uh, some structured uh, sets, such as lattices or even functional spaces. Yeah. Now, in this talk, we are going to focus on two particular cases. So, one is the Boolean case, and then we are going to focus on the generalization of this, uh, which is the nominal case. So by a nominal, nominal case, we simply mean uh, when the analogies are defined over a finite set uh, X, okay? So for instance, if it, the set X contain, contains uh, colors, so it could be, um, could be, for instance, this three element set, yeah? Okay, uh, in addition to this, we are also going to consider analogies which are defined over the Cartesian, over Cartesian products. And we are going to define, in this case, if we have a model of analogy for each one of the, um, the components, then we are going to say that four tuples A, B, C, and D are in analogy if um, each one of the, the components of these four tuples are also in analogy. Yeah? Okay, so uh, concerning the, the, the Boolean case, there have been several proposals for, um, so several models that were proposed for uh, defining analogical proportions. So the standard model, also called the minimal model, uh, is the one that says essentially that uh, the difference between A and B should be the same as the, um, the difference between C and D. So this can be defined with respect to this uh, displayed logical uh, logical uh, expressions and of course this um, is very close to uh, the numerical example that we gave uh, previously and if you look into uh, the patterns that um, that uh, satisfy these conditions you will see that you will have six different patterns which are displayed in this uh, expression now you also have a, a, a bigger uh, model which was proposed by Kleene and essentially it says that the symmetric difference between A and B should be the same as the symmetric difference between C and D and this gives us two additional uh, tuples which are exactly these two at the bottom which essentially express this additional property that uh, uh, A, B should be in analogy with not A, not B okay okay so we are going to consider the nominal case uh, because in fact, well, I will I will mention uh, I will mention um, previous results on the the Boolean case, but we are going to consider the nominal case. Yeah. So this means that uh, analogies or the, the the components they have um, they consider attributes which have values in uh, finite uh, domains. And uh, following the, the the Boolean example, we are going to consider the minimal uh, model for analogical proportion in this nominal case okay so we are going to say that a b c and d are in analogy if they respect one of these two uh, patterns that is to say either is that they are of the form st st or then sstt okay so this clearly covers the the, the boolean case and uh, and of course it adds some other cases uh, such as uh, for instance if we consider this example where we have items that are defined with respect to three uh, attributes we could have for instance the the um, we could see easily that um, the items one two three and four they are in analogy because in each one of the components they respect the one of this um, one of these uh, patterns yeah but for instance two three four and five they are not because if, for instance in the in the the attribute color uh, you already see here f uh, three different um, values and this is not possible with respect to this minimal model yeah. So this is what we are going to consider as our model of analogy in the denominal case. And then we will make some additional comments, yeah? 
Okay, so now, as I said in the beginning, uh, uh, analogies and uh, analogical reasoning has been used quite, uh, quite uh, so recently uh, on several machine learning tasks. And one of the the uses of uh, analogies is that uh, we can perform data set augmentation. Yeah. So, for instance, if we are given a, a given training set and uh, a classifier f. Uh, and, uh, and of course we are working with a given model of analogy then we could build the analogical extension of S by considering all tuples X for which uh, this anal analogy uh, holds that is to say you can find the triple such that these uh, four tuples they are in analogy and on top of it uh, if you look at the images of, uh, of your classifier you have that uh, th this triple here has a solution with respect to your model of analogy yeah now if that is the case then you can extend your set s with all these tuples x and you can associate to each one of these uh, tuples x an analogical uh, label yeah and uh, of course if that by analogical label i'm just meaning the solutions of these equations yeah and of course if you have several then you can just uh, um, implement a, a majority ver uh, voting in order to uh, have a decision uh, procedure yeah now if you have this then you have a larger training set and you could use this uh, larger training set with the new analogical labels in order to train your classifiers yeah now of course this means that this can uh, it can occur that this um, this training set is actually no uh, noisy and, uh, and so this raises the question, how can we ensure that this uh, analogical extension is sound? That is to say, the new labels, they coincide with the labels that uh, would be produced by the classifier, yeah? So, putting it in more general terms, what we would like to, to know, uh, for starters, uh, is um, what models of, uh, of uh, analogy uh, kind of uh, turn, so two different problems that we can consider in this setting so the first one is that if you are given a model of analogy you would like to know which type of classifiers make the analogical inference principle sound and uh, this can be seen as being equivalent to the to the two previous uh, problems and uh, as we are going to see as well the, the answer to this question is to look into analogy preserving functions and conversely of course you could also consider if you are given a class of classifiers you may want to know what is the suitable model of, uh, of analogy that will make this analogical principle uh, analogical inference principle uh, sound yeah so we are basically going to focus uh, on the first and we are going to make some comments on the second yeah so first the definition of analogy uh, analogy preserving function so we are going to say that the function uh, f is analogy preserving if the following conditions are satisfied so for any uh, four uh, tuples a b c and d such that they are in, uh, in analogy and for which the images of the first three are solvable with respect to this model of analogy that is to say for which i can find an x such that this tuple is an analogy then i have that the solution of this uh, triple with respect to this model of analogy is exactly the the, the image of this for this fourth uh, tuple okay now of course if you take this notion what you have is that uh, if you have two uh, two tuples so the a b c and d and a prime b prime c prime and d and if you have that uh, the image of the first uh, so f of a f of b f of c uh, is solvable and the triple made of the images of the the, the, the this triple here is also solvable uh, you know that you cannot have that uh, the solution for this uh, first triple is different than the solution for the the second triple because uh, of this um, of the fact that they share the same uh, the same fourth component okay so in other words what we are saying is that the the analogy preserving functions are exactly those for which the analogy inference principle never fails yeah okay so the question is to know what are the the, the functions or the classifiers that are compatible with this uh, analogical inference uh, principle so putting it in the schema if a b c and d they are um, these tuples these four tuples here uh, basically what we are asking is that if 
each one of these columns is uh, respects the analogy then the images of these tuples also respect the analogy okay so essentially this is what the, the analogical inference principle is saying yeah now of course in our model uh, for the nominal case uh, what we have is that each one of these columns actually has at most two distinct elements yeah so but this is for the, the minimal model and the question that we consider is exactly to describe the class of analogy preserving functions yeah now in the boolean case we provided these answers for the the, the standard model and for the cleans model and uh, essentially what we show was that the analogy preserving boolean functions are exactly those which are affine and uh, but there are several other examples in the nominal case for instance you, it's easy to see that constant functions are uh, ap also essentially unary functions are also ap and this is not too difficult and even the injective functions are also ap even though this is not very interesting but it's nice to observe this because uh, this has to do with the model of uh, of, um, of analogy that we obtain okay and it's not uh, difficult to see that injective functions are indeed analogy preserving yeah okay so in view of, uh, of the previous um, results and since we are using the, um, the minimal model we focus our attention on the so-called hard AP functions they are functions for which the restrictions of um, the restrictions to uh, Cartesian products where each one of the sets it has at most two elements uh, so the, the image of such uh, restrictions have size at most two okay of course in the boolean case if we restrict to the boolean case this hard ap are nothing else than the ap boolean functions okay okay so um now concerning the local descriptions of this uh, hap functions so for this we need the, the notion of almost defined which simply means that uh, a function is said to be almost defined if uh, for any restriction to this Cartesian product of sets with at most two elements, you can find a decomposition. So these restrictions, you can find a decomposition of this form uh, in which these functions are defined as displayed. Okay, and uh, what we were able to show was that uh, a function uh, of this form is uh, hard AP if and only if it is almost defined. Okay, this is not too difficult. Essentially, we use the, our boolean, the result on the for, for the boolean functions, and we just have to observe or to make the renaming of variables and the renaming of function variables. Yeah. Now this is nice, but of course this uh, only concerns restrictions of this form. That is to say, of Cartesian products of sets which have at most two elements. Yeah. Now the question is what happens in the general case and uh, for that we need to introduce yet another notion which is well known in universal algebra but perhaps not in this uh, not in this community which is the notion of quasi-linear function so we are going to say that a function is quasi-linear if we can find functions uh, phi and phi i for each one of the, the the components such that the function decomposes as the composition of phi together with um, together with this function that is to say the symmetric difference of the images so basically this is, is the renaming of the um, of each one of the variables yeah so it's easy to see that quasi-linear functions are indeed uh, almost a fun yeah and what we showed was that first uh, functions which are hard AP uh, if we consider the whole domain then uh, they are exactly those which are either essentially unary that is to say they only depend on uh, or they depend on at most one uh, one argument or then they are quasi linear that is to say they have this type of decomposition yeah and uh, just as an interesting result because the boolean case was solved using uh, the so-called clone theory uh, that is to say that is based on the notion of clone which is a class of functions which is stable under composition and which contains all projections and uh, what happens is that if the underlying sets they are all the same so that is to say we are really talking about operations over a given set x then the functions which are or the class of functions uh, hard ap functions constitutes a clone and this clone is well known in universal algebra to be the burlesque clone yeah okay so with this i kind of finish i'm just going to make a few uh, remarks concerning uh, ongoing work so essentially what we are searching is a unifying unifying framework of uh, analogy in which we can define the various or we can uh, consider the various notions of uh, of analogy so here we've been basically focused on minimal and standard models 
but we could we could consider much more yeah and of course for that we would need some suitable representation uh, spaces so for instance we could consider certain metric metrics in order to define our analogies and then we would like to explore to further explore the um, the, the, the 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 exchanges with uh, or the collaboration with um, cooperation with uh, artificial intelligence machine learning uh, we already mentioned uh, training set um, augmentation but we could also see some improvements of machine learning models by making set by making use of this um, of the notion of augmentation in particular we would like to further explore this notion of uh, transfer learning in the setting of uh, of analogies yeah in the framework of analogies yeah again for that we would need some um, we would need some um, some um, unifying framework in order to consider various notions of, uh, of analogy. So, with this, I thank you very much uh, of your attention and uh, I'm ready for, um, I'm open for any questions.